This is going to be it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Sky Factory 2.5. Today's all about Tinker's Construct. And we should have already done a lot of this stuff already. Maybe in episode 2 or 3, I apologize. And let me show you why. Let's look at their book here. All right, we haven't checked off anything in a while, and that's probably why I let this get so far behind. This is back when we were sieving gravel, sand, and dust, which we, we've already done. Um, we should have done the Tinker's Construct tools, made it out of bone or flint. We should have done that as soon as we got flint. It would have made our lives a lot easier because it would have made a really nice axe and a really nice uh, pick. Then they get upgraded more you use them. We're not going to use them much from this point on, but, you know, we should have done this. It would have been a very good early game thing. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to do that one and a few other things. We didn't do that one. We've already made obsidian with a stone barrel. Um, we're make Tinker's Construct smeltery for processing ore. We've already done that. That's the big furnace thing, the smeltery. Um, here's what I need. I need your help. I need your help bad. Upgrade an existing Tinker's tool with a metal part. How do you take an existing Tinker's tool and upgrade it with a metal part? I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sure you're going to tell me and I'm going to facepalm myself, but right now I, I have done a Google search on it. I can't find anything on this phrase or what it quite means. So if you do, leave it in comments below and I'll pass it along to everybody. Please, please, please. All right. Automate your cobble generator to tra with a transfer node. We've done that. Upgrade your mob farm to kill mobs, monsters automatically. We just finished doing that one. We've done the watering can, but I'm going to come back to that. Prepare a farming space. We haven't done it. We're crafted a minute. We've done this, but I'm going to come back to it. Here is where we are. We're going to make a Madoc from Tinker's Construct. That is what today's episode is basically going to be all about. And this is what we need for today's episode. Um, from the gold and the Envar over, you really don't need, unless you want to build the cleaver with me, I want to build a beheading cleaver. That way later we can um, kill um, wither if we can get withers and get their wither heads. Um, it's, it takes a lot but it's really well worth it. And th the reason I'm doing it today is I want you to see how the tool forge works. So that's why we're actually going to see and do it today. All right, here's what we need. Everything in these first two columns. First thing we do is going to make a bunch of blank patterns. And I think this one makes like 20 of them. It's three sets. 12 of them, excuse me, 12 of them. And we're going to take a blank pattern and we're going to put it over a, a plank. And then we get our tool stations. Uh, stencil tables. Yeah, stencil table. There we go. And I reduce it down. I like the half size one. And of course it gives us our books right away. And then we need one over a crafting table. Now, actually I don't need four of these. One, two, three, four. Because I was originally going to build these things separately. Um, a tool station or a forge. A tool forge. Here's the tool station. And the tool station is the same thing as a tool forge. Except it's can handle the metals so we're just going to go ahead and go skip the tool station go right to a tool forge using seared brick we made those of the smeltery basically it's four bricks uh, put together and to make one big brick and then you need three of those so you actually need 12 individual bricks to make that and then you got the blocks of i got blocks of copper you could use iron gold uh, aluminum any of the blocks even diamonds i think or emeralds um, but I, this is what I had excess of, so I'm going to use the copper, and again, we're going to reduce it down to half. And then this is the, is it parts builder? The parts builder, yep. Yeah, we're going to reduce that down. And then we need a pattern storage chest. And we're going to take that and put a blank one on top of it, and now we have a pattern chest. And that is everything that we need to get going and more in Tinker's Construct. You know, which is spawn? I don't think she'll bother me, but... And they take forever to kill. Alright, let me go ahead and kill her, and I'll be right back. Alright, we are back. I killed the witch. Now we have our 11, 11 by 11 little square here. Where are we going to put this stuff? Alright, um, the best place I can think is right here along these three slabs. Um, let's go ahead. We're going to take out the slabs and replace them. Let me go ahead and get this blazing pyrotheon out of the way. And we're going to just break those off real quick. All right. Now let's go ahead and get our stuff down here that we need to place down. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. All right. So this thing is going to go right here. This is our tool forge. It's like at the end of the runway. 
And what do we have in our hands now? We have a... No, what do we have? Right, what's that one? The part builder. We'll put that one right here. And we're going to put the pattern chest right here. It's got to be next to the part builder. Because then it puts the pattern chest right next to it. So you don't have to go over here to get your stuff out. It combines them. Okay, as long as it's right next to it. And then we're going to do our stencil table right here. And we're going to put the blank stencils in here. And again, the first thing we're going to build is a Madoc. Let's go ahead and look at our tool forge and click on the Madoc and you'll see exactly what you need. You need an um, axe head, a shovel head, and a tool rod. So let's get those patterns out first. Here is our shovel head, our axe head, and our tool rod. I'll put those all right down here. I don't think it really matters, but that's okay. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to make these out of flint and paper. Let's get the flint. Take about a half stack of that. And I left the sugarcane over here. We need to make some paper real quick. There we go. Oops. There we go. We've got six pieces of paper. We're going to use these in just a few minutes to um, make the durability of our Madoc a little bit better. I'll explain that in just a second. All right, so now we got our patterns. We're going to go ahead and make this out of paper. This lets us add an extra modifier to it. So that's why we're going to use a paper rod. And you just go ahead and put one of those there, one of those there. Now we need two pieces of flint. One, two. We got both these pieces. So now we have everything we need to make the Maddock. We're going to go to our tool forge and we're going to click on the Maddock again. There you go. Put everything where it belongs and we will have our Maddock. Now if you're not sure what a Maddock is, it's basically an axe, a shovel, and a hoe all put together, which is kind of cool. Now right now the durability on it is 67 if you look at it in the blue the blue 67 that so it only will last 67 times so we are going to make this thing last even longer by adding a diamond to it and that gives it 500 more durability now we're at 567 and then we're going to also add an emerald which adds 50 percent more so now we're going to get it up to 850 so now that's one hell of a maddox and let's go ahead and do, do I have flint on me? Yes, I do. So I'm going to show you something else. We're going to come over. Oh, my farm. Um, in between episodes, I have gone from 11 by 11 to a 15 by 15. Uh, it took a lot of memencio to get it that size. And I had to upgrade this bad boy right here to an octanket capacitor, um, which is basically the other capacitor with some other metals. It's not too hard. Just do the um, follow along. It's not too bad to make. All right, so we're going to replace this Maddox and put it in here and since I did that it took a lot more power so I had to add one more generator and I'll see if I can show you the pattern that I used just a minute but it's basically using the um, alloy smelter to get everything that you need I used an extra generator now and now I made sure I had all this stuff the blazing polyrothion all along here so I added one more here because originally it was just running into here so it went from seven to five now it's seven and seven and it seems to be sustaining enough lava and enough energy to keep it going. If I added anything else to it, I have a feeling it would go down. And so now I've got an easy way over to my smeltery because this farm's so much bigger too. All right, now this thing should have gone once or twice. This is what's really good about these Maddox and about Tinker's tools is I'm going to hit E here. Now it's been used. Just see how many times did it get used? Um, it got used once. Just go ahead and repair it. All you have to do is put it in your hot bar right here, put a piece of flint here, and it's fully repaired. So whenever it goes down, just go ahead and repair it with a little flint, and you're all set and ready to go. You don't have to go and build another one. I've been building Envar ones, and they last 450 shots, and then I have to go get two more pieces of Envar, and all, all this takes is a piece of flint. You cannot beat that, can you? All right, so oh, let me go ahead and put this back in the chest over here, because if it does need to break, and I need to... Well, if I don't have any flint on me, I can always put the hoe in there. And, yeah, I had about this much, and now it's doubled. It's gone back, so it's going a lot faster, because we need a lot of this stuff. And we'll do an episode on this really, really soon. All right, let's go ahead. All right, I'm stuck. And talk about what we're going to do next. We are going to build this bad boy. It is a cleaver. The cleaver, we're going to take the cleaver, and we're going to um, add beheading to it that way we can make it into a beheading cleaver and what do we need for that let's show you this is whoops let's go this one the supplies that we need 
this is to upgrade th these two here and this one here is the actual beheading stuff that we need to behead stuff and this is what we're going to need first off to get our patterns for it and I'll tr explain more just put this pyrithian back that way we don't lose out on the um, lava generating there we go and that's good okay so as I said a minute ago the stuff that we need for the cleaver we're going to need a wide blade a plate and two tough rods so we need those patterns out of here real quick and there is the wide blade or large blade so we got that one and we're going to need a plate large plate pattern and then we're also going to need a tough rod there we go now we need to cast the molds like we did the brick mold a long time ago we need to cast the molds for that and to do that we have to do a reverse image of it so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put these things in here put some cobblestone in here and we're going to get the stone then we're going to put a plate one in here and we're going to get a stone plate these are all disposable and then we're going to put the tough rod and we just need one of those even though our thing we need two and then we're going to put the tough rod here and we're going to go ahead and put gold in here now it takes two like it did the ingots I don't know if you remember when we made the ingots but it takes two pieces of gold to cast the um, plate for this and let's go ahead and let those smelt down and I'll be right back all right I've turned off my my automatic pourer here that way it holds the gold inside our gold is ready to go we got six ingots it takes two ingots for each of these we got two here and two here we're going to take out that piece here. We can throw it away. We really don't need it anymore. We're going to put the tough plate in there. It's going to take two more ingots. And then we can throw it away. We really don't need it anymore. You can save them if you want to. And then we're going to the, the wide blade. And it takes the last four. Now, now we're going to go ahead and throw some more of this stuff in here. It's invar. And I'll explain why we need so much invar in just a second. Throw that one away. All right here it tells you how much you need material cost for the plate is eight tough rod is three so we need two of those that'll be six six plus eight is fourteen and then this thing also takes eight so it'll be a total of twenty two bars that we need all together and as soon as that gets smelted we'll get going all right all the invar has smelted down just to need to pour it remember it takes eight ingots for this so it does take a minute for it to um, come out of here so let's just give it a second Two, two, two. There we go. So we got that. Now we need to do a plate, and that takes eight ingots also. So that takes a minute. We're gonna put some of the stuff in the chest. And the next one we're gonna do is the tough rod. Oops. Getting carried away. There we go. Now this only takes three ingots, so it goes a little bit quicker. that one away don't need it all right we have everything we need for our sword or wide blade or what is it called uh, the cleaver sorry the cleaver so we got two tough rods we have our large sword and we got our plate and that makes a cleaver and we'll rename it in just a minute I should have named it when I did it all right so now we're gonna click on this one and we're gonna upgrade it let's go ahead and get our upgrade stuff right now it only handles so many slots right now I think it has just one slot one modifying remainder we're gonna add two more slots to it Let's go ahead and get that there that there this will add one a gold and a block of, um, a block of gold and a diamond and then a block of diamonds and a golden apple will add another modifying slot and then the modifiers are gonna add to it is ender pearls and op, um, obsidian and that makes it into the beheading so that is what we're after and if you have any questions about all this stuff look in the materials in you book too and it will explain it all and I'll try to show you just real quickly what we're doing the long book okay uh, almost there all right here's where we add the modifiers the first one that we talked about just a minute ago was the diamond a block of gold next one is a um, golden apple and a block of diamonds 
You can do a, a nether star, but we don't have any nether stars, so we can't do that one. And then we are also going to do, let's see, the ender pearl, there it is. Um, series like knockback and other stuff that you can do, reinforcement. Um, beheading, that's the one, and that one, whatever you can say it. This is the one we're going to do. We're going to try to set it up for beheading. So we're going to go right here. We're going to take our sword, put it in here. Then we're going to upgrade it with the diamond and the block of gold. And that's going to add a second modifier to it. And we're going to add another modifier. And that will make it three modifiers. Now, if we had another star, we could do another one. But we don't have any other stars, so that we can only add three modifiers. Now, put four in here just so you can see. Right now, the sword is has really nothing on it. This will add beheading one. This will add beheading two. Now we're at beheading three and that's it. If we had another star we'd be able to add another one. Now this sword is pretty pretty strong and pretty powerful but it does give you, let me show you in your inventory, it does give you mining fatigue three so it kind of like, well it looks fast but it's not that fast. To, there you go. I was doing the defense. It does goes real slow but it also has 11 attack damage. So it's pretty strong, pretty powerful, and the durability, look, it's almost like 4,000. So you can sit there for a while and smack away. All right, let's see if we can try it out real quick. All right, let's see how this thing does. It should get a few mobs coming over here. And one one hit kill, and that's all there is to it. You can't beat that, can you? Um, let's see if we can get some heads real quick. I don't think I got anything yet. Hopefully a few of them will come down and see us. Come on down and play with us. I guess I could go on the other side and hit the button. I'm afraid the thing will kill it first. All right, come on, guys. There you go. Come here, Skelly. Ah! Oh! <laughs> He's getting me. I'll tell you that. All right. So, but it's a one-hit kill, and it does give you a 50% chance of getting the uh, mob's heads. Let's see if we can get a mob head out of this. There's one over there. So, it does give you a better chance of getting the mob heads and stuff. Um, you got to be careful out here because the creepers could explode on me. All right, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, that is the end of today's episode. It's all about Tinker's Construct and this bad boy. We will use this thing when we need wither heads. That's what it's all about. For we can get our wither, wither skeletons, wither heads, and we can we can fight the wither. <laughs> all right, if you saw something you liked in today's episode, please make sure you give me that like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It's really important. Both those things is so important to me. Show me some love. And then last but not least, if you saw something I missed or something I should have known, or if you know how to add metal to a tinker's tool, let me know in the comments below. And we'll pass that along to everyone else. Again, thanks for watching, my friends, and have a great day. Bye, guys.